What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I apparently am the jinx master in terms of this YouTube thing because at the end of the day, I said to enjoy the moment because you don't get buzzer beaters like that every day. And then all of a sudden, you get two on two nights in a row, back to back and back to back buzzer beater wins as we steal one in Washington. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bulls Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls game today. I, I, I am truly mesmerized by how we ended up winning this game and another buzzer beater by DeMar DeRozan to seal the game for the Chicago Bulls. I mean... I mean, what can what can you say? What can you honestly say to to try and make this make sense? What can you say from an analytical perspective, from an analysis type point of view, to make this make sense? There's nothing that makes sense in this league at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. That shot was, again, one of the worst shots I may have ever seen. We just saw the New Year's Eve heave last game, and now we've seen the New Year's Day play, ladies and gentlemen. And that was definitely the play of the game, and it was a fantastic victory. I mean, again, this is another game where the Chicago Bulls were extremely poor, extremely lackluster, and Washington had everything in their way. The only reason the Chicago Chicago Bulls was in this competition, this in this game, is that Washington was so bad from the three-point line today that it kept us alive in the game because everything in terms of stats for the majority was against us. There was no there was no real reason why the Chicago Bulls won this game, but we have one reason, and that is DeMar DeRozan, and that is another clutch game, another clutch point, another clutch three, and a big win back-to-back -back on the road. Again, look, when you don't play your best and you still win these games, it's an incredible sight to see, and it goes to show that there's a lot of resiliency, as I've been saying for the whole time in this team. There's a lot of resiliency, and there's a lot of fight, and that is something you can never take away from the Chicago Bulls. In the end, one of my friends said this to me at the end of the day, and it's something that I need to carry with me into the next few games and into the regular season with this team. I need to stop saying the Chicago Bulls don't deserve these wins, because at the end of the day, whether we play well or we play poorly, this is what a good team looks like. When you don't play your best and you win these games and you win these games in dramatic fashion or you blow these teams out, a win is a win. And we should walk into every game expecting and deserving wins. So the fact that we got this win, I need to stop saying that we don't deserve these wins, ladies and gentlemen. It's an amazing game for the Chicago Bulls in terms of the highlight again. We may have not played at our best. We may have not been a fantastic, the best version of ourselves. We're missing... Clearly, we are missing someone that can stop the dribble penetration into their paint. We're missing the Alex Crusoe's and the Lonzo Balls. We are seeing it with the defensive displays that we have over recent games. I don't think many people can see it because we win these games and we've done so. We've won seven in a row now. An incredible feat for the Chicago Bulls. But you can clearly tell that we are missing some defense on this team. And that's where we can obviously see the biggest weaknesses. But ladies and gentlemen... We are surviving, we are thriving, and we are winning. That's all you can ask for for the Chicago Bulls. And again, there's a lot that went wrong today. There's a lot that didn't go our way. For example, the second chance and rebounds and the paint points was unbelievably high for the Washington Wizards. They scored over 70 points in the paint today. The bulk, if not majority of their shots was in the paint and they could not miss from there. Their three point shots hurt their team and they decided to take a couple in the fourth quarter that kept us in the game, which was great. They kept us in the game. They allowed us to sneak up on them. We took the lead in the fourth quarter. We didn't have the lead until the first quarter of that game, 11-11. Since then, we didn't have the lead until the fourth quarter. It goes to show that 
in the end, whether we played well or we played poorly, they kept us in this game. They did not finish the job. They did not put their foot on our throat. They did not end the Chicago Bulls. And in the reality, that's what they kind of deserve in that way. Of course, no disrespect to the Washington Wizards intended. I thought they played an amazing game. Kyle Kuzma torched the Chicago Bulls today. Someone that has been a meme for many, many, many years on the LA Lakers has come to Washington and revived his career. And I thought he was an exceptional player today. And he was going to be on the other side of that buzzer beater if the Chicago Bulls didn't make it. He had the dagger in his hands and then the dagger dropped and the Bulls picked it up and we won the game because of that. That was an incredible play from Kyle Kuzma, and he torched us all night long. Bradley Beal had over 15 assists in today's game. He became a true playmaker, and he added 23, 24, or whatever amount of points that he scored. Amazing game for Bradley Beal, one of the best of his season, and it's unfortunate that it came at a loss for him. Players like Daniel Gafford played well. Again, everybody that was known for the paint ended up having a great game for the Washington Wizards. But through all of that being said, through the, point pain, through, through the points in the paint, the turnovers, being out-rebounded, all of this situation, the Chicago Bulls won the game. With everything put against us, we won the game. And the reality is, we deserve to win it as well. Let's look at the individual performances, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at the positives and the negatives for the Chicago Bulls. But my goodness, again... I, I might jinx it again for the next game. Who knows? Enjoy these moments, ladies and gentlemen. DeMar DeRozan is making some historic moves for the Chicago Bulls now, ladies and gentlemen. He is, in his first season, becoming one of our best players that we've seen on the team. He's becoming... I wouldn't say... Obviously, he's not Michael Jordan or, or the Scottie Pippins of the world. I'm not saying that, but... My goodness, is he really making a name for himself with just one season on this team? And he's having his best season in his career. He's having one of the best seasons in the NBA. And he's continuing his MVP campaign. And these two buzzer beaters to win this game only elevates his course. He's been truly unbelievable. I, don't th I know he was great. I know he's an all-star. But I'm telling you now... If anyone predicted that DeMar DeRozan would be doing this in a Chicago Bulls jersey, I'm sorry, I will never, I will never believe you. I will never believe that DeMar, De, that people thought DeMar DeRozan was going to be an MVP on this team. He was far from the, he was not the worst signing of all time or the worst signing of free agency. That is one of the stupidest takes I've ever seen in my entire life. And whoever said that honestly de deserves a demotion for what they said. But DeMar DeRozan being at an MVP caliber level. I'm telling you, no one else predicted that as well. No one could have told me at the beginning of the season, DeMar DeRozan is going to be an MVP. You can tell me he's going to be an all-star. You can tell me that he could potentially be an all-star starter, and I would believe you. But not this level. Not two buzzer beaters in a row. Not all of a sudden dynamite three-point shooter taking incredibly tough threes and making them. No one would have predicted this to me. At least that's what I feel. But again, let's move on. Let's start off with someone that probably won't have any of the highlight put on him considering he had a great game as well. Zach Levine had 35 points, 5 rebounds and 3 assists in today's game. Shot 50% from the field and 58% from the 3 point line. He was really good in this game and again when we were lackluster and not really scoring as many points as you'd like when we were kind of down and out. The defense was very poor tonight for the Chicago Bulls allowing so many dribble penetrations into the paint and let Washington kind of have the game of their lives in, in that paint and that's exactly that's exactly how the game went. But Zach Levine ended up really kind of keeping us in this game when it all seemed um, bleak. If Zach Levine didn't drop those three-point shots, those seven threes in the game, you're far from getting a, a win and a buzzer beater in this game. More likely than not, you're getting blown out. Without Zach Levine, we don't win this game. So as much as DeMar DeRozan will get all the praise and all the... All of the great, um, I guess, all the great comments and, and stuff like that. He's going to get all the praise by the fans and by the players and by the media. But Zach Levine should not be uh, forgotten from this game. He was truly unbelievable, in my opinion, and he had a great game. Kobe White had 20 points, two rebounds, five assists with one steal. A very good night from Kobe White once again. And we've now seen three games where Kobe White has really stepped up and played big minutes for the Chicago Bulls. And that's three games in a row we are starting hopefully to see that consistency shining through when you get to the three game four game period and you're having still great games when you're scoring 20 points when you're dishing out five assists for a team that's a really strong game from Kobe White and he deserves big praise something else that I want to say as well before I go any further this Chicago Bulls team for the most of the game only had four players scoring up until the third quarter where Troy Brown Jr got an easy layup 
we only had four players scoring for the Chicago Bulls. So it's clear to see that the team camaraderie wasn't exactly there for the Chicago Bulls. And that's something that we need to pick up. We need to see a lot more balance and a lot more con contributions from the team going forward if we're going to get more, I guess, dominating victories than, I guess, this one, which kind of went to the last shot and really only came alive in the fourth quarter. But again, a really good night from Kobe White and a, another game where I think people are starting to slowly trust that he, become, he can become that player that we all expected from him in the first place. Being a dynamic scorer, being able to dish out dimes, he's going to be very good. And again, when Lonzo and Caruso returns, that I still see Kobe White being able to score at this level because he'll have more people trying to facilitate the ball to him rather than him kind of being that ball handler himself. Nikola Vucevic had 22 points, 12 rebounds, 1 assist. In the first, I guess you could say, half of the game, uh, it felt like one of those nights for Nikola Vucevic where things weren't falling. He was in the post, uh, missing a lot of easy shots in the paint. And again, it kind of helped the Washington Wizards cause because they were dominating in the paint and they played very small today. So Vucevic was one going to be one of the key guys that we needed to see have a strong game. And in the first half, we did not see a lot from Nikola Vucevic in the strong game category. In the second half, he came alive. In the second half, he really helped the Chicago Bulls. He got into the post. He was doing post moves on players like Kyle Kuzma. Bradley Beal, anything of the sort. He got a really nice offensive rebound from a DeMar DeRozan missed free throw, which ended up in an and one and kind of allowed the Bulls to tie the game, take the lead and all of that. And he was very big in the second half of the game and he shot 60% from the field and he had 22 and 12. He was really, really good for the Chicago Bulls today and a really strong second half to say the least. I thought he was truly amazing. And again, a really consistent Nikola Vucevic is starting to form. One bad game out of the five that we've had this week is something I'll definitely take all day, every day for the Chicago Bulls. He's really developing into that center that I think we all know him to be. DeMar DeRozan had 28 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 10 from 22 from the field. Obviously, 1 from 1 from the 3-point line. And that one 3-pointer won the game for the Chicago Bulls. And again, this is another situation where DeMar DeRozan did not have his best game. This was a better game for him than the Pacers, don't get me wrong. He had a much better game today than he did against the Pacers. But it still is not his best game. Again, the field goal percentage at 45% is not something we usually see from DeMar DeRozan. But ladies and gentlemen, when it all matters the most, when everything is down and the chips are down and you have one player to take the shot, You've got Zach Levine on this team, you've got Kobe White on this team, you've got Vucevic on this team, and you've got DeMar DeRozan on this team. And there are a bunch of players there that are good enough three-point shooters, good enough players to take that shot and make a good shot like that. But DeMar DeRozan, two games in a row, was the go-to guy in the final shot of the game, and two times in a row, he's ended up sealing the deal and getting us an away win that I don't think many people expected us to have by halftime of this game. So again, Again, you've got to give all the credit in the world for DeMar DeRozan for another strong game and another day where he carries us out. We had New Year's Eve, ladies and gentlemen, and he ended up bailing us out in that game as well. And in this game on New Year's Day, he's going to have a terrific start to 2022. I'll tell you that. There's not much of a better start than you can have by sealing a buzzer beater over two defenders in the corner for a three-pointer and winning the game for us. Could, incredible. Truly incredible. Truly incredible, awe-inspiring, and an MVP caliber play. DeMar, um, sorry, Derrick Jones Jr. had nine points, four rebounds, one assist, uh, one steal, and two blocks. I really thought Derrick Jones Jr. did come alive in the later parts of the game. I thought in the first half, or in the first quarter, I should say, foul trouble didn't, it was end up in a lot of mismatches. And I thought this was going to be one of those games for Derrick Jones Jr. where the inconsistency lies. He gets in a lot of foul trouble. He doesn't play as much. But that didn't end up being the case. I thought he had a really strong defensive game, blocking Bradley Beal a couple of times, getting out on the break, nearly had one of the best dunks of the season if he was able to get that to go over Daniel Gafford, a former Chicago Bull, who I will, who will say also had a really good game. And I'm glad to see that he's found his home in Washington. And yeah, uh, an incredible good night for Derek Jones Jr. In the second half, he also came alive, made some big shots for the Chicago Bulls, made two threes, got to the foul line, three from four from the foul line. A really solid night from Derek Jones Jr. And in a game where we didn't have Javonte Green, in a game where Tyler Cook went out for injury, and hopefully that is nothing serious because that did look really painful for Tyler Cook. Hopefully we don't see him out for a long period of time because he's, again, it it's in the worst timing. He's almost... 
kind of came alive this season and he's developed as a backup center that I think most of us can trust. So it's gonna be, it's gonna suck to see him go out and hopefully it's not for a long time. But nevertheless, Jerry Jones Jr. came in, played some power forward position for the Chicago Bulls, played the backup center position for the Chicago Bulls. And I thought he did an okay job and I thought in the second half he was truly helpful for the Chicago Bulls. Moving into the bench, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this bench was far from great. Again, only two scorers on the bench today. So that depth that we were talking about in the last game didn't end up coming true this game as well. And this is obviously been an ongoing issue for the Chicago Bulls in terms of bench scoring. When it comes to scoring, this bench has not produced anywhere near what it can be. But the depth of the team and the bench defense of this team is definitely a different story. So we're going to start off with Troy Brown Jr. Troy Brown Jr. had two points, six rebounds, and one assist in today's game. I thought Troy Brown Jr.'s defense was really good for the Chicago Bulls. Again, he got a couple of plays where I thought he did a solid job. Again, he was one of the guys guarding Bradley Beal, one of the guys that was kind of guarding Kyle Kuzma. Again, their guards did the most work. So I guess you could say the defense wasn't always there for the Chicago Bulls. Again, players like Kobe White didn't have the best defensive game, even though statistics may say otherwise. There were a couple of dribbled penetrations, dribbled drives that you got uh, DeMar, Zach Levine, Kobe, Io, Troy Brown. They respo they're responsible for those types of things. But in all... I really thought Troy Brown Jr. had a good defensive game. I thought a lot of these guys had okay defensive games, but Washington just simply overpowered a lot of our guys. And then Ayo Tosumu had four points, five rebounds, one assist, and one steal, and a block in today's game. And his defense on Bradley Beal is is really good to see. Again, this is a rookie that we're talking about. So, of course, Bradley Beal got his 15 assists and his 23 points and all of that, and he had a fantastic game, one of the best of his season. But... Ayo had big responsibility today. Ayo was the guy to try to slow down Bradley Beal, and I thought he did a very good job. He's very similar to Trey Young, Bradley Beal. You're not going to stop Bradley Beal. You're not going to limit him to five points or anything of that nature. You're just not going to do that, especially when he's just returned, he's ready to go, he's fresh, he's ready to play. But what you can do is slow him down. What you can do is force him in situations where he has to make a bad play, take a bad shot, get blocked a couple of times. That's what Ayo does. And that's why Ayo is a very good defensive player. And that's why he got a lot of minutes despite not despite him not scoring the ball well. Despite him airballing mid-ranges, he still gets a lot of minutes because of his defensive display and because of the way he's able to kind of control an offensive player and how he forces them into very poor shot selections. So he's a really impressive defensive player in my opinion and that's what I mean by yes the bench didn't score well today six bench points is truly unacceptable and it's a big reason as to why this game was so close but the defensive display from Io the okay defense from Troy Brown Jr is what kind of um, in the end did okay for the bench but we have to see a lot better and Matt Thomas played 12 minutes had zero across all the board and this is just a really poor game from Matt Thomas. Simple as that. 0 from 4 from the three-point line. He had some really wide open shots and he missed them. Simple as that. And he's actually going to be my must improve because of that. Again, I know he didn't play a lot of minutes and, and it's it's the usual thing. When Matt Thomas plays well, he gets around 20, 25 minutes a night. When Matt Thomas doesn't play well, he gets 12 minutes like he did today. But... Those shots could have really helped the Chicago Bulls team and his specialties at the three-point line. And he didn't exactly show his specialty very well for this team in this game. It's just a bad game from him. It's not something that I want to dwell too much on. We're going to move on quickly, move, uh, swiftly move on from, the, I guess, that situation. Another player that I could put in is Troy Brown Jr. I know his defense was fine, but 29 minutes and two points is not exactly a great um a great offensive game for Troy Brown Jr. And that's a streaky player that he is. He's a very streaky player. So he does need to improve in his scoring in the next game. Hopefully he'll be able to do that against the Orlando Magic. And the player of the game... Again, I'm, I'm going to follow my heart over my brain. My brain's telling me Zach Levine. And my brain will always tell me Zach Levine if we didn't have another historic moment for the Chicago Bulls. But today, and again, if I did it for Kobe White in the last game where many people said Kobe White should have got it, but I gave it to DeMar for a buzzer beater. And I know Zach Levine should get it, but DeMar DeRozan once again scored a buzzer beater and he's the reason why we won the game. So I will give it to DeMar DeRozan because of that. Again, it's not his best game. It's not his worst game either, but he definitely did something today 
that once again, I just simply can't believe that he's done. And not only did he do it today, he's done it two times in a row now. So, I, I it's, 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 it's something I just can't explain. It's the feeling that you get when you win these games and you've done it twice now. You win these types of games that you feel that you kind of are out of in the at halftime and you feel like, oh, there's a really tough game going. The Washington Wizards are one of the clutchest teams in the NBA according to statistics and yet we won this game. So all the emotions brought into that is the reason why he's the player of the game. The Bulls record is 24 and 10 and we extend our win streak to seven. And again, um, this win streak could have ended yesterday against the Pacers. This win streak could have ended today, but yet we're still talking about it and it's still alive and we still have one of the best win streaks in the NBA at the moment. So it's an incredible feat for the Chicago Bulls. And once again, we are beating competition that in the end we should be beating relatively, I want to say relatively easily, but we're beating the competition that we should be beating. Washington have a 18 and 18 record. They came in with a positive record, 18 and 17. But the Bulls in terms of talent, do have a better team than Washington. So it's not surprising that we walked away with the win today, but then in the manner that we won, that's really the um, the surprising part. We will verse Washington very soon again. We've got the Orlando Magic in the next game. And then after that, we've got the Washington Wizards. So again, very similar to the Pacers situation. Washington is not going to forget this game. Hopefully by the time that we end up getting um, Alonzo Ball and Alex Crusoe back, we will have a much better chance at kind of beating Washington at their own game to try and stop their paint production as much. That's going to be the key for the next game against Washington. But looking at Orlando, again, this is the game where Nikola Vucevic, I hope, will have a strong game against his uh, former team. And it's another game that we should be winning. Let's see. Again, I'm really intrigued to see when this win streak will come to an end. It has to come to an end sometime. We've got some tough games. Games ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Just looking at the schedule, we've got the Brooklyn Nets again. We've got the Warriors. We've got Boston. We've got Memphis, the Cavs, the Bucks. It's a really tough schedule of games that we do have coming up, but we're still finding ways to win and we're still finding ways to extend this win streak. How long will this win streak end up coming into life? How long will this win streak stay alive? Let's see what the Chicago Bulls can do in the next game against Orlando. This is a game where I hope the Bulls can win because we do have a better team and we are in a better position to win this game. We'll find out what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. And I'm, I might go celebrate, man. New Year's Day for a lot of you. Uh, whew, we've, won, we've won a really tough game here. I'm very, very happy about it. Take care.